Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the Commonwealth Cabin. Today's video, I'm just gonna warn you, is gonna be quite a bit different than typical. I'm gonna go over, you know, some eBay stuff, some eBay sales and all that normal stuff. But I feel like some folks out there need to hear what I'm about to say. Maybe I need to hear what I'm about to say, I suppose. And I think you'll enjoy it. Let's go take a look. And Poncho is joining us today because he knows there's treats in here and we ran out of food. Blue Ridge Mama went to go get us some food. And by us, I mean the dogs. Well, maybe me too, if I'm lucky. Power Rangers bag. This one was a cool little pickup. I almost missed it as I was walking out of a garage sale. And well, hold on a minute. This thing was in great shape. It was laying on the ground and I was like, hey, how much for this? They said a buck and I was like, sweet. I've sold them similar before. It's kind of wrinkled up. I wish I could show you. When you take pictures for this stuff, pack it full of paper, clothing, something, make it really stand out, make it look big, make it look like a good, good picture. And this one sold for $35 plus shipping. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I know I say this a lot, but I used to teach. I did it for 21 years and I used to coach baseball. And there's not a lot about reselling that really is comparable to teaching, but there is quite a bit about social media, doing social media that is comparable because there's an audience and you get to communicate with that audience. And lately I've been getting messages from folks that aren't the typical, like, you know, moaning and groaning, the complaining, the naysayers, the people that have that negative attitude about reselling that just have the common complaints and I'm going to quit and eBay's the devil and you know all that stuff. Normally that and that stuff still comes in, but lately I've had a few messages from f people who are honestly searching. They're seeking out a way to improve what they're doing. They have goals, they have aspirations and everything they're trying just isn't working. And I want to talk a little bit about that today as I pull some orders. I had to stop for just a second because I just realized there were two messages left on all these sales today. So at least two viewer sales. This happened to be one of them. And Chris, oh, this is my boy Stones. You've been messaging us for a long time. So we appreciate you watching. I remember back in the eBay cave you were doing that. Hey, Kevin, just saw this in your latest video and had to grab it for my Power Ranger collection. Well, I'm glad we could pass it on. That was in the picker video last week. So we appreciate that greatly. And let me say one more thing. I got to go out to the other shed to, to grab the next item, which is a really, really cool one. I was excited when I saw that one sell. But let me just add this. So, you know, going back, I mentioned teaching. You know, I happened to teach, and I was a baseball coach, and this applies to that as well. I happened to teach AP World History, which was one of, if not the most difficult at the time. It's very different now than it was then. AP college board exam to pass. It was really, really hard. And I mean, it was hard for me to even teach it. That's how hard it was. It was hard to get across some of the concepts. It wasn't like any other social studies history course you've ever taken. It was much broader than that. It was the history of the entire world, but it wasn't even just the knowledge base. It was the interpretation base. It was crazy and it was difficult. So kids that were used to succeeding at things found it very, very hard. And to get them to move forward, part of what I did, and this is what I'm going to do today, I'm not going to read these comments. Some of them got pretty personal and not in a negative way. I just don't want to expose their lives out there. But it was kind of sad because they really, really were used to succeeding. They had a plan in place and they've not seen the results as a reseller that they in, that they envisioned, that they dreamed of. They wanted to retire this time. They wanted to quit their job. They wanted their wife to be able to quit their job and stay home with the kids. All these different scenarios. And they feel like a failure. And instead of going into the details, we may go into different tips and tricks and stuff like that, but I wanted to really encourage those folks and some other folks out there in a much different way, much like I used to do with my AP World kids and of course with my baseball players, because that is inevitably a sport that has ups and downs and it's a psychological game that you have to play and you have to master it. And I think that's where a lot of folks are. You say maybe because it's the summer slowdown or whatever's going on right now with some sellers, but I tell you what, there's always a way out and it usually starts right here. And I kind of want to relay come on, some of my failures my recent failures because people look at my business and they think it's you know nothing but roses and a lot of success but as a lot of you successful people out there know you get 
rejected a lot. You fail a lot. I can't do this with one hand. See, I just failed. I had to put it put it down. I couldn't do it with one hand. And it's how you react to it, I think, that is the biggest key. And I fail all the time. I fail. I'm going to go over some specific ones. This one's kind of cool. I want to carry it with two hands when I go across the yard. But I saw this one at a sale. And it was sitting there like this. I'm like, it looks like a pomegranate. It looks cool. There was other, some other glass pieces that were really good. And the prices were insanely cheap. I ended up paying five bucks for it. All of us. But they were only asking a dollar. And I'm like, holy moly. And I turned it around and it said Blanco. And I'm like, that is cool. Turned out that this one was one of the rarer ones. And it sold for a bunch of money. $142.50 plus shipping. How you doing, bud? And speaking of failing, this isn't what we're talking about. But boy, you know how many bad pieces of glass I had to pick up before I started to pick up a few good ones? And I still pick up bad ones. But, you know, that's part of the process. I probably failed 50 times before I succeeded 50 times with glass. And I'm starting to get just a shade better, thanks to Tim over the years. So for any of you who have ever mentored somebody, coached somebody, taught somebody, you'll know that the one of the things you have to have in place if you're ever going to impart anything worth imparting on somebody is you have, well, you have to have a couple things. You have to have trust, but they also have to feel, they need to feel some kind of connection that you understand what they're saying. And a lot of times, you know, you could impart that very easily to everybody in a classroom by sharing your mistakes and your failures and admitting to your failures while you're talking to people. And it made you more relatable, more approachable. And then kids would be open to an experience with you that might help them get over whatever hurdle it is that they're going through. And apparently a lot of folks are going through that hurdle out there right now because I've got more messages the last week, the last four days from people who are ready to hang it up. And I hopefully, and some of them, maybe you should. And I don't mean that negatively. It's just sometimes you have to cut bait with certain things because there's a whole aspect of your life that is much broader than just one part of it. But a lot of folks feel so down because they want this part of their lives, the stuff that we love, this reselling, to be a central part of their life. And that's how they envision it going down the road. So hopefully that's who I'm talking to today. And sometimes it takes exactly that. That message that somebody sent me just a few hours ago, just admitting that self-examination, that whatever I'm doing just isn't right. It's just not good enough. And coming to grips with that, here is a sweet little vintage. Remember, I paid a quarter a piece for these. Is that what I paid for these? 50 cents? I can't even remember. But that one is made in the USA. And these have been selling really well. And we bought a bunch of guest stuff as well. Slowly, but they have been selling for decent prices. $24.95 plus shipping. You know, I didn't often give pep talks in my class. And sometimes they were needed. I very rarely did, but I did from time to time. I, st I feel this way still. Discipline is more important than inspiration. However, there's a place for both and motivation. And sometimes you've got to have both. If you are a disciplined person, even if you're not motivated, you will succeed. Now, sometimes it takes the motivation to get to the discipline. But I used to kind of bring this out in my class and I'd use historical quotes and stuff. The unexamined life is not worth living. Most things that are successful... Along the way in the journey, they stop and they reevaluate what they're doing and they make adjustments. They get rid of things that aren't working as long as they've been given enough effort, right? If they didn't work because of the discipline, then don't give up on it. And that's what I want to talk about when I talk about some of my failures. And some of my failures eventually turned into successes in the exact same trajectory that I was going, Just I just tweaked it. And some of my failures just became failures and they got left behind. And I think that that's where a lot of folks are right now, including live selling, including what niche they were trying to sell in that turned out not to be the right niche at the right time. There's different, different stories I've got from different people. And I think that this is something that there are some people and I find all of this intriguing, but I do know this as we get through this today, there are so many success stories out there in making the adjustments and changes. I watch people. I mean, you watch my own journey. You can watch what I used to sell and what I sell now, and it hasn't changed greatly, but minor adjustments sometimes can make the biggest difference. And I think there's a lot of folks out there searching for those minor things. This is a good thing 
that might change their trajectory as a reseller and therefore change the trajectory of what they envision the next 10 years to be. Next item was, this was the other one that had a message on it actually. So this is the two, I think there's 20 sales happening out of here today. This is the second one, the only other one that had a message on it. Beware of the cat. Now this one threw me off so much that when I listed it, I didn't even say be aware of the cat. I said beware of the cat. And when I picked it up, I swear it said beware of the cat. And it's just, just metal plaque. And I, it was just one of those things. I'm like, somebody's going to want that. And it's probably not out there on eBay. And somebody did. And it was a viewer. So be aware of the cat. $15.95. Let's ship it. And this one went to Melissa. She says, love it. Busy summer. Hope yours has been great. Melissa. So thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope you love that one. My wife is going to get it if it didn't sell pretty quickly. Of course, she doesn't need it. But... She was gonna get it. I got another piece of glass out there that I'm excited about. Bought it at the same exact sale for the same exact price. I'm gonna go grab that, but I wanted to just to give a little bit more context here because I'm really trying to motivate some folks who I think are honest in their failings and really truly do want to fight through this and find a way out and continue to resell and continue to get it to grow. And a few of them saw growth. And a lot of folks, and if you've been reselling a long time, What's happened is a lot of folks came in during COVID and just saw this and then it kind of plateaued. And those people have been dealing with what they feel is failure when really it's just back to the norm for folks like us that have been selling for 20, 25 years and they don't know quite how to deal with it. So that's part of it too. You got to look at the overall picture and don't look at other people's success. And a lot of people, we know this, you put it on social media and it all looks like, you know, peaches and cream and roses and all everything's wonderful and it, the reality doesn't always you know reflect it in the stuff you see on social media and they start to judge themselves against other folks but going back to my coaching days and I played ball from when I was like five to well into my 20s and then I coached sometimes I coached and played for a little while and I kept going until just a few years back and now my son plays and the way I coach him is I don't really do the ins and outs and the mechanics and all that stuff. I'll leave that up to his coaches. What I coach is what I used to see in my ball players and the people who played around me that I saw they were maybe just as good as me or I played on those teams and they just had a trajectory that was just much greater than I was ever going to be able to achieve because of whatever, physical limitations, whatever it was. But I could still be honest enough with myself to take pieces of what they were doing and doing right and try to implement that into my life, not just baseball. And so when I coach Turner, it has nothing to do with where his arm slot is or how he swings or whatever. It's about his body language. It's about the way he controls himself. And it's especially about how he deals with failure. And some of us deal with failure like this. You just lay down and do nothing. And that's not these people, huh? Sun's in my eyes. So quitting isn't an option for these folks. You can kind of hear it, right? Maybe maybe it is an option, but this is they still want it so bad that this is their last ditch effort to make it work. And I think if you have that attitude and continue that attitude, you will find a way to make it work. So we're going to talk about some of my failures as a reseller, as a content creator, and kind of let people know out there hey even if you have success there there are a lot of times will be periods of just absolute failure along the way my biggest time period where i thought i was a failure as a reseller was right after reagan was born maybe oh man i'd been reselling for about 10 years at the time i suppose i picked this one up by the way this said czechoslovakia on the bottom i don't know if you can see that or not i'm like that thing looks awesome and it was in perfect shape no chips or anything and I found some similar comps from Czechoslovakia and I used their keywords and titles and all that. And it sold and it sold for a hundred bucks plus shipping. So I could have had them each for a dollar, but I figured I'd get just torn up in the comments. And I didn't know what they were worth. I figured this one was probably worth about 30 or so. Just from, you know, being Blanco at least that much. And I figured, eh, maybe I'll at least get 20, 25 for this. It looks cool. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll offer them five bucks a piece. They were extremely happy and I'm probably gonna get torn up for that now because they were worth far more than I thought. I don't think I've talked about this before, but Reagan was, whew, she was a challenging little girl. <laughs> she was extremely needy and took just the lifeblood out of her mom. I mean, it just consumed my wife's time. 
And, you know, my wife's always been a, a great helper of mine. So I was working my butt off at the time. It was long before social media, whatever. I was teaching, I was driving that bus, I was coaching, and I was trying to resell. And it was just so hard for me to leave. I'd want to get home as quick as I could to give my wife a break. I couldn't, you know, I didn't go to Goodwill as much back then, back when I could find stuff there. I didn't even want to be gone long on a Saturday morning or go at all. And so I was trying to find ways to resell in a very small scale where I didn't have to package stuff up and do all that. And I started to try to do all the board game stuff, which some of you remember me selling a lot of that stuff, even on social media, because I never really stopped. And I, I would do this thing because we get board games for 99 cents and they were always there. I could go in and get them and I could leave and I could either part them out or I could sell them as board games or I could do something that well, I thought I could do something. Turned out it was an abject failure. At the time, you were allowed to do this. I don't think you can even do it anymore. But I'd have all these games listed. I'd have like 100 games in the listing. And I'd say, pick three for $25 plus shipping or whatever. And it worked for a little while. But boy, it was an absolute failure in the end. It was terrible. And it was a lot of work for very little money. I was selling board game pieces and I'm making like $100 extra a month, $200 extra a month. And my, my family was not doing well. We barely, barely got by without going into debt. And I felt like an absolute failure. And I had stopped selling some of the stuff that I was selling. I wasn't sourcing like I used to. I'm like, something has got to change. And I never just threw that away as board games were a failure. I took bits and pieces of it. Matter of fact, you'll see one here in a minute. I'll do it right now. So for that part of it, I, I eventually stopped doing it. I actually had a guy, interesting story, who bought every board game I had <laughs> in one big purchase. And I'm like, this is crazy. What a great opportunity to get out of this and to do something else. He was an artist or something, and he was making a board game sculpture. I'm like, sweet. This right here is a leftover from that era that I still do, where I could pick up backgammon board game pieces for like a buck. I still do it. And this is the dice and the cups, and they sold for $11 plus shipping. And then I sell the other pieces, depending on what they are, between $11 and $15. And it's like, hey, I can make in two sales in five minutes, and five minutes of shipping, I can make like $18 profit, and I can do it over and over and over again. And so you take your failures, and you find the good parts in them, and you keep them going, and you discard the rest, and you find your own way forward. And one of these messages in particular was about trying the live selling, and they just failed. And they had purchased and purchased and purchased for live selling, and it failed. And so not only did it not work, and they didn't make money, they lost money on it. And then that has soured them to what they used to do and enjoy, which was static selling. And they got, were trying to get back into that, and that wasn't going as well. Of course, they're trying to get back into it in, in, in a difficult time right now in the summer. Difficult for some folks, anyways. And they were just really down on it. And I would just say, hey, there are some things that you fail at that you completely cut bait with. And I've done that. Look at, and some of you may remember this, because I did this while I was on social media. My wife started to do it. We started to see the success and the growth of Poshmark. And I got totally out of my comfort area in buying women's clothing at thrift stores and putting it up on Poshmark. And we were terrible at it. I mean, just awful. And I didn't like it. And I just ultimately decided to completely cut bait with that entirely. And I don't feel like a failure now from that because I learned. I learned about things. I learned basically what I shouldn't be doing and what I'm not good at. And I still did learn a few things. There's a few names like Lily Pulitzer. I remember um, buying a Lily Pulitzer thing for that that sold for like 60, 80 bucks or something. I'm like, huh. And that name stuck in my head. And I started to do that. That's where I started to get a little bit more familiar with purses as well. And that's now a big part of my business. And of course, Tupperware was a huge part of my business. Now it's down to one tub. And it's because, to be honest, I wasn't a great picker 20 years ago. And this stuff is what I could find in my area and what I could make money on. And now I'm just really selective about it. It's got to be super cheap, super clean, and have a decent sell-through rate. And that's pretty tough for some Tupperware. But you know what? And I still sell cheap stuff like this. this I paid a dime. It paid, and sold for $9. Bless you, man. My wife just got home and I helped her get the groceries out. And the dogs are now with her. So you probably won't see them for a while. <laughs> Unless they want a treat, but now they got dog food. So, and you know what, Tupperware, this may not be for a lot of folks. 
and it really isn't for me as much as it used to be but it's just one of those examples remember that board game era i was telling you about you know i did some dumb stuff looking back at it and it didn't stop me from succeeding in the end i i thought this great idea i would turn like board game pieces into all kinds of things you know cufflinks and i don't know jewelry and i bought blank jewelry and blank things and blank and just all kinds of weird stuff and Christmas ornaments and stuff like this is going to be how I can continue to resell and not be able to source like I used to because I don't have the time anymore and it was an epic failure and a financial loss and I should have known myself better than I did but it helped me in the learning process to know that I'm not going to be some kind of Etsy seller not that I couldn't be if I tried hard enough but it really wasn't my mentality which kind of leads me and I appreciate everybody watching this so don't unsubscribe or anything but you know, sometimes we have a bit different personality types. And if your goal is to make, you know, $300 million, you know, whatever, make $100,000 every two months by being a reseller, you're probably watching the wrong channel. That's not really what I'm about. And you probably would be better off finding somebody who has your aspirations and hopefully your personality type and follow those people. I always say, you know, if you want to be a success at something, find somebody who's a success, success at that thing and is similar to you in some way that you can relate to them. And there's a lot of folks, a lot of people deal with depression, anxiety, all kinds of stuff. There's lots of folks out there who are succeeding dealing with those issues. And those are the people you should be following. But you can still follow me. You know, that reminds me a little bit of something in my classroom. But let me pull these cassettes first. Here's a little tip. If you like, like me, you like to sell cassette tapes and stuff, sometimes they're not worth a ton of money, but I still love to hunt for them and find them. There's ways you can do it and still make money. And that is when you're looking through bins, you know, if you find four or five or six of the same person, or in this case, Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac, which is very, very similar, obviously, because she, well, you know this, you can buy that as a lot and sell them where independently they could not sell on their own and we got $23.70 for these and I paid a quarter a piece so that's not a bad little profit what is that a dollar fifty into almost twenty four dollars plus shipping so in my classroom a lot of times the kids that I did not help the most were the overachievers you know there's you know you've been in a classroom maybe you were one of these you know, one or two kids in the classrooms that were just off the charts, intelligent, just no matter what they did, they just absolutely just crushed it. They took notes on everything. They just, they were in their book reading it all the time. They just were an overachiever. And when it came down to test time, they, they achieved. They did okay, because that's what they did. But sometimes just that average Joe, the person that related to me in the class, and I wasn't even an average Joe, I was a poor student, but for whatever reason, that personality type really connected and it spurred them on to great things. That's why I was viewed as a great teacher, because I could get these normal kids to have great success. But they never measured the overachievers success in my class versus how they achieved in other classes because it was the same. I didn't affect them at all. So the personality type of the people that you learn from and what you do. That's why I think this channel has been successful because the great majority of people out there aren't trying to make $3 million a year reselling on Amazon. They're having fun. They're using this as extra income. They're everything pickers. They like to pick what they like. They like to sell what they like. I think that's the appeal of this channel. That's not to say that if you're an everything picker and you're struggling, sometimes the best way to get a little bit better is to just absolutely immerse yourself in something that is not necessarily what you do. But don't try to do it in seven categories. Try to do it in one. Try to find some expert. If you just told me three years ago I'd be selling a $150 piece of... I'd be like, you're crazy. I didn't even want to. But I just got interested in it and I enjoy it now. And I'm glad I started to learn. This is the stuff I like to sell. This is a Jimmy. I picked this up at a sale not too long ago. It's a little upside down witch. Halloween is coming, y'all. I'm excited. We're going to have some Halloween shows. Probably on Dibjit. And this one did not sell for a bunch, but it makes me smile. And it sold for $16. Plus shipping. Let me see if it works. Oh, we took the batteries out because we got to ship it. Sometimes if you feel like you failed, just remove yourself from the situation long enough to examine the situation without being attached to what you thought was going to work and look at it from a different perspective. It's easier said than done. 
but what is it especially you know evaluate your whole business even if it takes down pulling out a paper and pen and looking up the data saying all right this category is my best category maybe you start back up again just focusing on that category and then adding stuff in along the way maybe it's technical maybe it's maybe you need to watch that channel that's going to go in and dig into the numbers and maybe you're gonna need to find somebody to look at your listings and say hey here's your issue this is what's changed where it used to work it doesn't work anymore we talk about that stuff from time to time i'll avoid it on this particular video but there are things out there that you can make minor adjustments and you can see enough progress that gets you back on track again i guess i will say something along those lines really quickly here this Le Bubble, I don't know, I think it's like a knockoff version of something, but it was five bucks and I saw a decent sell through rate on it, even not at a high ASP, but $22 plus shipping. And I'll tell you what, now might be the perfect time. It's when I did it last year, I actually did it the very beginning of September and I concluded it by the end of September, where I completely delisted everything and I reevaluated everything I was doing, my practices. All the stuff that I did from shipping to listing to average sales price to sell through rate to all of it. And it made an immediate difference in my business. And I have lapsed back here and there. But for the most part, I've continued that going forward and the year over year growth is there. And I don't even look for a ton of year over year growth. I just want to see growth. This may seem kind of dumb to some folks, but I used to sell tons of video game consoles. And now I still sell them, but I sell them on different platforms. I'm selling them on shopcommons.net right now in lots because I'm not a technical person. I know that seems dumb to some people, but just the idea of cords and testing and cleaning and doing all that just makes me want to cringe. But this stuff's easy, right? You can handle this. And this one sold, what did this sell for? $18.95 for a PS4 controller, I think plus shipping. Now I am a fairly disciplined person. So except for sometimes in sourcing, but other than that, I'm very disciplined as far as regimented and schedule and all that stuff. But there are some folks out there who are not. So that's a bigger issue. But if your problem is not discipline, your problem is something else, then maybe it's just going to take some pruning to get things going again, to get you excited, to get you back on the right track. So stopping doing something that isn't working is not failure. And that's what it took for me. Whoa. It took a little bit for me to say, hey, this is not worth my time. This is not making me money. This is not making me happy. And to cut those things back were the big key. This didn't sell for a bunch, but I got it for nothing. It sold for 30, I don't know what it sold for, $33.20 plus shipping. I did hear a dog come in. Who's here? Oh, it's Wallen. Oh, mama fed you and you want some more, huh? So I'd love to hear in the comments from some of you old timers, you pros out there, been doing this a long time. And I'm not talking about specific advice to reselling, like uh, use better keywords or whatever. No, I'm not talking about that. What would you give? You know, maybe some anecdotes, maybe some stories, things that you used to do that you stopped doing and things that you started to do that got you back on track again because these people clearly don't want to quit reselling they want to do it better and they want to get more joy out of it i accidentally turned that on right there there's a failure right there maybe i should talk about that huh are you a failure no so you succeed every day in getting treats south asian bible commentary i paid five bucks for this and it was a place where I had no signal and I brought it home and I was glad to see it was worth something. $23.70 plus shipping. So I look back at some of my failures in social media and there's probably a long list. Some of them I might not want to share to be honest. But Garage Sale Nation, you know what that was started as? That, that channel started as a result of me having this wonderful idea that I was seeing YouTube live auction sell, sales. That was before whatnot and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, these people are turning over a lot of merchandise. I'm like, I'm gonna start this channel. I'm gonna get an audience over there and I'm gonna start to live sell on YouTube. And I thought, this is a great idea. This is amazing. And boy, before I even started it, I, I went out and I sought out the right people. Mr. Buys a lot, you remember me calling you cause you were doing that as well. And I started to talk to people about it who were doing it. And I wanted to see the negative effects of it or the negative parts of it. And there was a ton of back end work, people not paying and you're keeping track of sales and whatever. I'm like, holy moly, this is definitely not for me. I need something to keep me straight. And it, it was a failure from the get go. It never even launched. 
But I never thought, I never forgot about that idea because I thought it was a way to expand the business. Of course, then live selling comes around. And then I started to do that. And I found that I wasn't really in love with doing that on whatnot. And I still do it from time to time, but I wasn't in love with it. It wasn't my passion. And that's a really big part of it. And that's maybe an answer for some of you. Maybe start over with what you are passionate about only, and then branch out as you get more passions and start to grow that business. And like they always say, right, if you do something you love, it's never a job. And that is really true. Now, a lot of us can't do that because you got to bring in income and you got to put food on the table. But I never forgot about that idea. And then when District came along, I took that idea of bulk wholesaling. And especially when all the auction sites and stuff, you know, it was all going online because of COVID and the auction houses. I took that idea and I eliminated, at least for now, the live selling part of it. And I said, hey, we can do this and we can provide a platform for people to do this. And even in a way that I like to do it. And so I took the learning experience from the failure and I put it together with what I thought was going to succeed, and it is succeeding. It's not an overnight success, although it appears to be that, right? Shop Commons is just blowing up. It's crazy how successful it's been so far. It even kind of surprises me, to be honest with you. And But it wasn't an overnight success because I had been thinking about this for a long, long time. So maybe the answer to your next step lies in those failures, and oftentimes it does for me. Good and Beautiful History Year Course Book 4. You sold to two different people. This one sold for just under 24. This one sold for just under 19, plus shipping each. All pure profit at this point. You know, a lot of you don't know this, but we used to do a homeschool hustler channel when my kids were young because I was seeing some success in social media and we tried that and it was a failure and it was a failure really well it was multiple reasons but most of it was the discipline side of it i didn't have the time to do what it took and to, to have the discipline that it took to be a success doing something like that to toys with turner turner used to you know when he'd sell a toy or something we would play with it and then make it a video and the kids were homeschooled and they go on field trips and stuff but it took a lot of effort and so in order to succeed in the area you want to succeed, sometimes you have to cut something else away. And that's my biggest struggle. I'm always trying to build things. But sometimes once they're built, they take you know maintenance and it takes away time, which is why I've spent the last six months still building new things, but making sure I can carve out what I love and what I know I do really well. And what I think I do the best is individual selling on eBay and static set, static selling as well. And I think I can communicate fairly well and I can promote pretty well, which is why I decided to try to build these things from scratch. Dibdit.com has just escalated lately and is really going to be a success in Q4. Shopcommons.net is just an overnight success, even though I said it wasn't, but it really has been pretty good. So maybe that's the answer. Maybe you're just trying to do too daggone much. And a lot of you out there working 50 hours a week and you got families and kids and sports. And, and sometimes you got to have realistic expectations and long-term goals and work every day to kind of meet them. This was a cool buy. Sugarland Ticketmaster ticket t-shirt signed. And I'm like, that's got to sell for something, right? And it did. It sold for $35, I think. Plus shipping. Is that right? No. Yeah, that's right. $34.95 plus shipping. And for those of you who watch carefully, you've noticed that I have cut back in order to do all these new things I'm passionate about in building. I've cut back things I'm not as passionate about, like whatnot. I used to do four to six shows a month over there. Now I do one. And I might not even do that in the future. I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably continue to do one show a month and we'll, we'll keep ramping up this other stuff because you simply can't do everything. And part of that's the cross-listing too. You know, a lot of folks have really doubled down on that cross-listing and then there's a lot of folks who've gotten completely away from it. And you gotta make those decisions on what is the best use of your time. And let me tell you, for some of you, it's not selling Tupperware. And for me, it's not either for the most part, but it's hard to pass up little stuff like this. I gotta be honest with you because it's so stinking easy. I saw that thing. It was clean. It was perfect. And it, and, I, and it was a dime. And I'm like, shoot, am I going to pass up $7 profit on that? And I'm like, no, I'm going to get it. And the next one leads into the last point I really want to make. And this is really key. And I kind of touched on it earlier with, you know, be careful of the people you follow. You know, they need to be, well, I mean, hopefully they're honest people and they're telling you the truth and all that and not making things look way better than they are. But they also need to, you need, you need to relate to them in some way. 
And that's not just about the people you follow on the internet. This is the people around you. Surround yourself with good people that give you good merchandise. <laughs> But I'm, I'm saying it facetiously, but it's, it's the truth. So this is from my death pile picker who's up here picking. And I gave him a lead for a pick. And he came back and he had this. And he had some other stuff. And he sold me this, which was really cool. And he's always been kind to us. So shout out, Mike. All those rough edges, Mike. We love you, death pile picker. And let's see. Bam, bam. This is, I should have told you what it is. This is a toy. Let me read the listing. This is Bam Bam's Club from 1964. <laughs> and of course, it would take somebody like Death File Picker to realize that. And $29 plus shipping. Sold another Nike T dry fit. Boy, that's gone. We've sold about half of these at this point. We are making a bunch of money on these. And bought them all at the Webster Flea Market in Florida. So speaking of, you know, surrounding yourself with people that do what you want to do and that do it well... Even if you think you're better, you can always learn something from somebody else. And that's certainly what I try to do. This one sold for 20 bucks, 19.95 plus shipping. There are a lot of folks, even out there in the YouTube space and other social media, that I don't always agree with. And I get criticism for hanging around a lot of different people. But you know what? And I may not even agree with them all the time. But there's value in everybody. There's, there's education to be had in most everybody. If you're a discerning person and you can weed out the things that you don't really, <laughs> that you know are kind of BS, you know, you could still learn a bunch from folks. And I learn a bunch about reselling every single day. I love this content, which is helpful. You know, if you'd rather watch something else, you know, it's difficult to learn. But obviously, if you're watching this, then you enjoy this kind of content too. And I just continue to believe that there is value to be had in just about every single person that I watch. And I pick up little things and slowly over the years, you just get a little bit better and you're willing to change and you're willing to adjust. And in this case, I think there's a lot of folks out there who've been sending me messages. They're willing to make those changes. So give your advice below. All right, the dogs are back because Turner's back. Turner, are you more excited about the your your own fall baseball season or the college and football, NFL football season starting? I'd say my own baseball season. <laughs> Very good. All right, you got a joke for us? Where do sports teams get their new uniforms? Where do sports teams get their new uniforms? I don't know where. New Jersey. <laughs> Appreciate it, bud. Bye. All right, something I forgot, y'all. I think it's right here. Mother's Finest. There you go. What are you doing? <laughs> are you doing records? <laughs> you doing records? Yes. I'll do that one, baby. Twelve ninety-five. Plus shipping. <laughs> All right, Reagan's He's here. My Poncho's here, Wallen's here, Blue Ridge Mama is here, Reagan is here. Alright, what do you got? Thank you. Marlene got a CWP sticker and a blue CWP shirt. And Brian got a CWP Week of Things Moving and Trash Cash sticker. Alright, thank you very Poncho, much. don't exert yourself <laughs> too much there, bud. <laughs> Bye, and don't forget to your stickers at CommonwealthPicker.com. Alright, my wife is shipping and I forgot another one. She There it is, right there. Little carnival glass toothpick holder. That one sold for fourteen dollars. Look at that Fenton sticker. Fourteen dollars and ninety-five. Is that right? And ninety-five cents plus shipping. Oh, look at you doing the record anyway. Yeah, that one too. Can you do that one? You want me to do it? That's so cute. I don't know why I'm not keeping it. <laughs> I like it. Sold for fifteen bucks. Maybe you can buy it back. Baby, you know what I'm gonna make deal of the day? What? I'm gonna make this the deal of the day over on Dibbed It. Your favorite. Oh, yeah. Yep. So cute. I'll put them all over there for like super mm. for cheap. Oh, there's the identical ones. They're supposed to be on a little Jeep. Oh. Yeah. They're gonna be toys. Yeah, they're pretty toys. toys. But these are, I like them. That's I'll awesome. put them over there super cheap. What do you think? Five bucks plus shipping? Sound good? Or is that too much? Okay. I'm just going to add one more thing in here before I let you go. And, and that has to do with those folks out there who they don't have a network, right? Even their own families don't support them in what you do. And there's just nobody to confide in, nobody to ask questions about. And a lot of times that's when they reach out to me is to really engage yourself in some kind of a, a network, some kind of a group. Even if it's one other person, somebody out that you could might maybe meet picking Maybe it's a Facebook group, Trash Cash Podcast, although that's grown so big it's not quite as intimate. 
you know, find yourself a little network and surround yourself with good, positive people and ask those questions. And don't be, you know, feel silly for asking questions and don't feel like you're a failure if you've admitted failing and you want to continue and you want to find that path forward. So anyway, any rate, it's a different type of video. Sorry if it turns some folks off, but I felt like at least for those folks who'd sent me those messages just over the last few days, I had more than I typically do. That I And maybe it is because of the summer slowdown. But remember, I'm bullish on reselling. I have been for a long time. There are more and more online sales every single day than there's ever been. And this is a good time to be in reselling. Not a bad one, even though there are some bad time periods in that little journey. So, anyway, thanks for joining us today as always. And I can't wait to see you next time.